Welcome to the creative community. I'm your host, David Starkey, and my guest this time is poet Laurent Bossler. Laurent, welcome. Thank you very much for having me. Well, I, it's been a, a, a pleasure getting to know you over the last, what, 10, 11 years? Yes, uh, already. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, I, I remember when you first moved to Santa Barbara, you were a guest on the old edition of Very Creative old yeah. edition. It was fun, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So now that uh, we're talking, you are the new poet laureate of Santa Barbara, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank um, you. Let's maybe start with that. What, it's, it's been how long since you, not that long. Three months. Three months. Um, what, what are the first three months like? The first three months are utter panic. Right. Because I have so many projects that I would like to realize and, and so little time. Um, but I have one very big project that I'm working on, which I'm 90% sure will be realized. And if you want to know about it, I'll say it very quickly. Sure. I'd like to edit an anthology of poetry by Santa Barbara poets, young and old. I would like to start at seven years old and mm -hmm. end at 107, if I can find right, someone right. wrote. And um, they would be um, as as um, varied as possible. By that I mean also Latina, Latino poets and Shumash poets and poets of all uh, paths of life. Mm -hmm. And then my ambition is to have those anthologies distributed at clinics and hospital waiting rooms throughout Santa Barbara County. Okay. So that instead of reading People magazines, maybe some people would open the book right. and read a few poems right. of Santa Barbara poets. Now, are the poems, are you imagining them to be poems of hope or just poems of anything? I will try not to make them too somber, mm -hmm. um, but it also sometimes helps to read a poem about going through something and coming at coming out, out the at other the other end. end. And acknowledging the darkness. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So there'll be poems of, of what is it, hope, mm -hmm. um, and, and poems of, of um, waiting to be to be told something, you right, know, and what you that's about. As you would be about. in the waiting room of as a, you of would a medical be in the facility, waiting room, yeah. right. Yeah. But also poems from children, and also poems about nature and and mm -hmm. and the ocean okay. and Santa Barbara and right. its roofs and light. Right. You know. So uh, how uh, people are watching this, they're like, "Whoa, I, I got a poem for that." Yeah. Um, uh, how are you imagining this call would go out to folks? I think it will be a call for submission that I hope might also be posted at the Santa Barbara. Library, okay. so that people would see that it's as they it's, come in and, and yes, go, yeah, yeah, right. as they come and go. And then what I hope is that in our fabulously rich poetry community here in in Santa Barbara, that I will send the call for submission to you, for example, or to other poets, and say, do you know somebody right. who so would like? So it would, would snowball, you can, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, you mentioned the library, and, and you've been holding office hours there, as it were. Yeah, yes, tell me about that. and so that is something that I would love to do um, even after my role as Poet Laureate is over, is to have a presence there at a certain day, at a certain time, so that people can come and say, I got a poem and I want to give it for my mother's birthday, or mm -hmm. I have a poem, you know, that I want to give to my future fiance. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd look at the poem and, right. and work with that aspiring poet and tell them <clears throat> maybe how to get it a little better, make it a little bit better, right, right. Or, or tell them that it's absolutely beautiful. Right. Don't change it. a word. Yeah. Don't change a word. You're very good. So uh, do, do you have any set office hours yet for that? Not project? yet. Yeah. I'm, I'm now planning that with, okay. it's only been three months. Yeah, right. And we're planning the Santa Barbara Poetry Series reading. We're planning the anthology. We're planning 
uh, workshops that I would like to give to seniors. Mm -hmm. And all that is in the calendar chaos of my calendar and the, and the library's calendar, right, yeah. which is well, chock yeah, full. By I the know, way, thank you, Santa Barbara um, Library. They're amazing. 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 And we love our Jace Turner. Oh, do we love, yeah, yeah. do we love Jace yeah, Turner? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you've 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 been teaching for a long time, and we're, I'm going to come back at the very end and, and ask for some more um, uh, advice that you have for for poets. Um, but I want to get in now to this book that we have here. It's it's these many rooms. Uh, this is your latest collection from Four Way Books. It's it's a fantastic uh, collection of poetry, and it's not really a collection per se because it, there's a through line here um, and it's unfortunately uh, inspired by a, a great loss. Yes. The, Can you tell us a little bit about the that? The loss of my husband, the poet Kurt Brown, who actually taught me all I know um, in poetry because I arrived here in 1986 not speaking English very well but passionate about poetry. This was from Belgium, you came? From Belgium, right. yeah. And, and he, he literally ta taught me everything I know. And after having taught with him at um, Sarah Lawrence College and at um, UCSB for a very brief time, um, Barry Spax. Mm -hmm. um, here's a hello to Barry Spax. Um, he died. He, he died in three days. He was gone. He went to the hospital? He went to the hospital um, for a little in and out. Surgery. Something that you wouldn't expect. Yeah. Not, not at all, right. not at all. Um, and um, to, to, to the point that when he, we went into the hospital to have that little surgery done, and I went and bought food for dinner, and I had already started prepping dinner. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it, mm -hmm. um, how things happen so quickly. Right. And so this book is about the mourning process, um, but, but, but not in a, in a poor me um, way, but in the astonishment of, of what happens all of a sudden when the love of your life is gone all of a sudden mm -hmm. like that. And, um, and I wrote about, I think, probably a hundred, a hundred and a little over a hundred poems and I think there's only there's very few pages and pages I I really put it down to I think 50 50 poems mm -hmm. what, what, what was the selection process like for that the selection process was trying to find a way to explain how Nothing that anybody tells you literally happens. It, it, it's, it doesn't happen that mm -hmm. way. And beautifully so. Um, I refuse to listen to books who tell you, oh, you're in stage two right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, this is stage five. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not how it happens because we're all so incredibly different. Right. And because the relationship that we've had with that person is unique, right? Had that been married with another man, it wouldn't have been the same, right? right? So um, light also. Light played a huge role because of the darkness. There was Light was suddenly such a contrast, mm -hmm. such a fascinating event that I had to um, fare with light. I had to take that light that Santa Barbara is unique for mm -hmm. also. Yeah. You know, no, I mean, not recently, but, not recently. <laughs> but I know, I mean, I hope the sun is still yeah, there, yeah. but whatever. Well, let, let's hear a poem. We've been talking for, for uh, eight minutes and, and these poems are so great. Viewers are going to be mad at me if I don't let you read your poetry. So uh, let's, let's jump in. I think the first one you were going to read is Attic Room in Belgium. Is that right? Yes. And, and, and I will very quickly tell you about this attic room. I was married and had children and raised my children in, in Belgium before um, my husband left me and then I moved to America. And I had rented a very small attic room that nobody knew about. And I would only go there on my own with a book and my notebook and, and a pen um, and just spent a few hours there of total silence and peace. And then in this book, I remember that room. Um, in, and in this poem, I mean, I remember that room before entering the rooms of my memory with 
this marriage and this love, which was the love of my life. So this is called Adecrum in Belgium. I needed for months after, oh, I'm sorry, I'm reading the second poem. Let me start again. It, it, it's right here. Adecrum in Belgium. Dust covers the window, but light slips through as it always does through cracks and under doors. Every day at dusk, the sun through branches hits a river's bend and sends silver slivers to the walls. No one's there to see this, no one. But it dances there anyway, that light. And when the wind weaves waves into the water, it's as if lit syllables quivered on the bricks. Then the sun sinks, swallowed by the dark. And in that dark, more dust, more dust settles, sighs over everything. There's no silence there, something always stirs, not far away, small rags of noise. Rilke said most people will know only a small corner of their room. I read this long ago and still don't know how to understand that word, only. I think of you, love. Search for you in each room that breathes between me and dusk, me and dust. Love, torn corner from this life. Mm. So you, you said at the very end towards the, the main thrust of, of the book, uh, talk a little bit more about rooms. I mean, uh, rooms are enclosures. Um, and yet, right, right. light is openness, and, and so how do those two kind of central metaphors work that together? Is, you know, that's a brilliant question. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> no, really, that's, that's, that's exactly what I was trying to mm. do, is that inside the room of mourning, there is always light. Mm -hmm. And inside the rooms that I lived in with him, and, and it could be, you know, rooms of, of, of memory or real, literally, rooms. Um, even in mourning, the light of that life that we had together prevails. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, um, and although rooms have, are enclosures, there's always a window. Right. There's always a window with always light door, coming. Yeah. And always a door, <laughs> right? And yeah. that's the consolation. Right. That's the solace, right. if you will. Well, if viewers are, are uh, just joining us, we are hearing from Santa Barbara Poet Laureate, Laurent Bossler, uh, reading from her book, These Many Rooms. I'd love to hear you read another poem, Laurent. This one is, called, this one is um, about the, the beginning of realizing that if I had to write about this, I had to put it in its own room, that every poem would be a room, mm -hmm. would be a poem. And, and, and most poems um, succeeded. I mean, not succeeded, but I could put them in a room. Right. Um, and um, this is so, th this is more of the opening poem um, in a 17 section right. um, poem that is one long, 17 poems making one larger poem about Kurt's uh, death. My husband's name was the poet Kurt Brown. I needed for months after he died to remember our rooms, some lit by the trivial, others gentle with an obscurity that comforted us. It hid our own darkness. So for months, duteous, I remembered. Rooms where friends lingered, rooms with our beds, with our books, rooms with curtains I sewed from bright cottons, Tables of laughter, a chipped bowl in early light, and black branches by a window bowing toward light. And those rooms, too, in which we came together to be away from all, and sometimes from ourselves, I remember that also. But tonight, as I lean into the doorway to his room, and stare at dusk settled there. What I remember best is how to throw my arms around his neck 
I needed to stand on the tips of my toes. Mm. So often, you know, a poem, a powerful poem, ends on an image like that. Um, for people who don't read a lot of poetry, why, why is that so powerful to us? I think, and, and I think that's something that I tell my students. Um, if you say, I needed to continue to hope, well, that doesn't show me much, does mm -hmm. it? That isn't an image that I'll remember because I can't photograph hope, mm -hmm. right? To continue to hope, how do you make a picture of that, right? Or how do you make a picture of what joy I had with him? Well, the joy of having to stand on the tips of my toes <laughs> to throw my arms around his neck, that is a picture of joy, of love, of right. of of liking right. that moment. Such as, so much stronger than the word joy. Yeah. Right, yeah. instead of the joy of putting, right? right yeah. And so um, he was not as tall as you are. But he's a pretty tall guy. <laughs> he's a pretty tall guy. Um, and so, and I'm a pretty short little Belgian. And so I always had to stand on my toes to kiss him. And it's, it's a metaphor. Yeah, and right? a, a lovely one too. Yeah, it's also a metaphor because I looked up at him a right, lot. Right. Phys literally and also psychologically right. because he taught me everything I know about what I love the most, which is poetry. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you've been teaching that now to a, a lot of people. I mean, I, I think of you as one of the best read poets that, that I, I know around, and I always love to hear your latest recommendations for, right. for poets. I, I think the next one you're going to read is Ocean Rooms, and I, I wanted to preface our conversation about that by... You mentioned earlier that you had taught at Sarah Lawrence, and, and I think you and Kurt worked together at the Aspen Writers Conference in Colorado for many we years. Did, yeah. So, you lived far away from Santa Barbara, and yet there couldn't be a more Santa Barbara book than, than these many rooms. Right. I mean, it, it's just in just every line, um, practically. Talk to me a little bit about becoming a Santa Barbara. Poet, since you're now our poet laureate. Right. There, there are schools of, 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 of poetry where, where teachers say, um, you know, you have to be original and you have to um, um, find these odd moments in your subconscious. And even if it's not very clear, it's okay. And then there's the other school of write about what you know. Mm -hmm. And Kurt and I had moved here to retire. And, and maybe to teach, but, but we had grand, grand ambitions also to, to um, do a lot of poetry things in this, in mm -hmm. this um, town. And all of a sudden, um, three years after we moved here, he was gone. Um, and Santa Barbara became my place. It was where I was going to remain mm -hmm. um, under my jacaranda tree. Mm -hmm. um, Which really <laughs> occurs quite a bit in this. Jacaranda tree in that book. If you don't like jacarandas, <laughs> yeah, don't buy the like book. book. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, and and um, I walk every morning now along the ocean mm -hmm. and talk to the rocks and talk to the gulls and everybody. Oh, it's that little old lady talking to rocks and gulls, but she's She's fine. She's, 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 she's fine. Um, and then also one thing is that I dispersed part of his ashes um, near a rock mm -hmm. on um, Arroyo Bujo Beach. And so I go and I, then, you know, it's that little lady who's talking to a rock. Of course, I don't stop the people who walk and say, I'm not talking to a rock people. I'm talking to my husband who's dead right. because it would, I'd get arrested. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that, that poem about ocean rooms is one day walking along um, the beach and it was the lowest tide I had ever experienced here um, in Santa Barbara. And I realized that there were all these rooms that are hidden by the mm -hmm. waves, mm -hmm. you know, that, that have that, that beautiful movement and discovered like a treasure in, in the ocean's rooms. And that's what the poem is about. Mm. Can we hear it? Yeah. Yes. And it's, it was written after, it, it's Arroyo Burro Beach. It's not Butterfly Beach, it's, it's Arroyo Burro It's a very Burro specific beach. beach. Very specific beach. 
It's called Ocean Rooms. The moon trawled the low tide far back behind the beach, beyond black rocks into a shimmer of gravel and beach glass, a climped rug of green, amber, and gold, hidden most of the year in the ocean's back rooms. But it's winter solstice, and a large sun is all chilled radiance this morning. The tourists are gone, the locals still asleep or on their way to work, so the ocean throws open its rooms for me, alone, lays bare a million splinters and shattered deaths, shells and boats and glass and bones, letting the sun stun them with air and light. All of this, such wonder and wreckage, unburied, alive between sky and sea. I'm glad for this beach, glad for its tides, for things that do come back. Just as I leave, coming close so eagerly, a backlit wave swells, rises, curls, and drowns this instant back into its kelp-choked rooms. Mm. So kelp-choked rooms is an image that there's a certain darkness to it. Right, yeah, right. right. And, and drowns. Yeah. And drowns, yeah. and yet there was light just before, just right? Before, it's yeah. Again, that contrast So it's between that ebb and flow, yeah. Ebb and flow. And the kelp-choked rooms um, have a life of their own, right? There's, there's, in the kelp choke rooms of that ocean, there's also such life, mm -hmm. um, and 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 so many things happening, and and that's what fascinates me. Mm -hmm. Walking along that beach, it doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. We sleep, it doesn't stop. We go, I don't know. We go to, <laughs> you just Wherever, went to Japan, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't stop. Right. You know, it's it's amazing, um, mm. and it's life. Mm -hmm. It's life around death nonstop, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we just we got about uh, six minutes left, and I, I don't know if we're going to be able to get two more poems in, but I'd love to try. <laughs> okay, let's try. Let's try. Um, I, I'll read you a poem about being in my living room on Memorial Day, and Memorial Day has the Memorial Day day, and also memories of 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 uh, being in that living room. Um, it's called Living Room Memorial Day. These garden flowers sit too pretty in my living room. They're the only live thing in this dust and stuffiness. So I bring the bouquet outside to the table under the tree and let it take in the light. Let those flowers be for that very old man I can't forget who wept, hunched on a park bench as he pushed a dead sycamore leaf round and round with his cane. Or let them be for the crows finally quiet this morning and the black rats as they slink up and down my fig tree. For the dying day lily, although the day isn't dead yet, for the candles lit, then left to die on 10,000 soldiers' graves. For the charred smell of meat the neighbors flip as their daughter sings a cannibal king with a big nose ring to her stuffed dolphin. How no one will remember this moment, the street a flap with flags and cookout frantic, while I, mercifully morten, mortal like all of this, sit by a table with flowers, and invisible still, rot slithers up their young stems. Mm. Well, you wanted to finish with a poem called Bedroom. I will finish with a yeah. poem called Bedroom. Bedroom. Light puddles over the old floor planks climbs the wall behind what his place was in our bed and glows there. 
Soon, past noon, jacaranda shadows douse that light and push it out of the room every day, as if they know he won't come back. Then reds, golds, and grays ooze into the clouds' great rooms while dusk all tact and hesitance loiters by the door. And for you, for me, for my neighbor in his yellow raincoat and plaid pajama pants, and for who it is inside that ambulance, ambulance yowling down the 101, light, dying, curls up inside night's wide open arms. Mm. Those are beautiful poems. And a beautiful book, These Many Rooms. Uh, this is, if folks are here in Santa Barbara, they can check it out in Chaucer's um, down in Ventura. You could probably pick it up online. Um, it is, wow, it's, it's something else. There are some signed copies at Chaucer's. Ah, okay. So, so if you wanna <laughs> head up there. Yeah. So, it, we just have about two and a half minutes left. Yes. I've been trying to reserve this time for the guests to give viewers who are interested in their craft some sort of general craft uh, advice. What, what, what's the, the best advice you can give to people who are writing poetry or would like to write poetry? Everybody can write poetry. And, and, and I really want to insist on that. All you need is a paper and a pen or a pencil. Right? That's it. That's <laughs> it. No, that's I it. I can write a poem right now. You can <laughs> write a poem right now. In ballet, you need shoes, and sculpture, you need clay, and, 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 and for music, you need a piano, and all the other arts of painting, you need a brush. For poems, you need a big open heart, a pen, and a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And that's how you start. And everybody is a poet. The problem, I think, is that around nine, 10, or 11, children become self-conscious and lose that poetic impulse that we then have to find back. Um, so what I'd like to say is write your heart out. You are a poet. What is that thing that, that um, academics own poetry? They do not. We own poetry. The street owns poetry. Um, uh, poetry Out Loud owns poetry. Poetry Jams owns poetry. Um, I have amazing students who go out there and recite poems that, that would change the world if the world would listen, mm -hmm. I assure you. Um, and so don't be self-conscious. Um, write and then take all the abstractions you put in your poem <laughs> and replace them by an image. Okay. That's so we're it. getting rid of the joy and we're putting the, the woman standing on her tiptoes to kiss tip -toes, her. Tiptoes, exactly. Okay. You know, and, and, and we're taking away um, I hate war and putting the image of these soldiers who give up their life mm -hmm. for us. Or I, I am against um, what is happening at the borders right now. No, just Show that one child holding the bars of the wall that is between Mexico and, mm -hmm. and America. Imagery saves poetry. It's imagery and, 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 and an open heart. And try to get out of your head into your heart. Those are great words to finish on. Thank you so much, You're Laurent welcome. Bossler, Santa Barbara Poet Laureate. Thank you. On the show. Thank you. The Creative Community is a co-production of CAPS Media and TBSB. It's produced here in Santa Barbara with a generous grant from the Diana and Simon Roth Foundation. I'm David Starkey, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.